I'm Darrell Connor. I'm the uh, Director of Business Development. Crystal, it's good to be with you today. Great, Darrell. It's really great to be here. I'm Crystal Kadakia. I'm the CEO of the LCD Group, also the co-creator of the Learning Cluster Design Model. I know we're going to have a really great conversation about how learning is evolving uh, today. You know, my first question to you is, you know, agile mindsets are popular. So what pros and cons have you seen that are related to experimentation and iteration in modern learning? I've been thinking a lot about this lately because on one hand, Agile for Learning is like the new kid on the block, right? Yeah. Everybody, and, and it's not even that new, right? In the tech space, now 20, 25 years strong, there's been this very fast mindset around iteration and experimentation. And that's very different from how we often design learning. We really often design it as this static piece that has to be perfect. And then, you know, we launch it and then we never touch it again. So yeah. I think there's a lot of pros for bringing iteration and experimentation into the way we design learning. And that's one of the things I like a lot about the learning cluster design model is we talk a lot about building hypotheses around things like who your learners are and not just from a single target audience standpoint but more from like different learner personas but there is a point though where i've seen agile for learning go way too far and this actually came up recently we're working with a client and they are in the tech space and so i actually saw l and d the training department really mirroring that tech culture to a fault the follow-up that I wanted to ask you about that is, I think a lot of companies have taken the agile approach even before COVID. How much of this has come out because of COVID where people are forced to you know, work from home, work online and work individually? How much of this have you seen as a result of COVID? Yo, you know that phrase, it's the darkest before the dawn? Sure. That's how I think about the pandemic is like, Man, you know, we've had this digital technology enabling and empowering all of this stuff for years now. I mean, my first location-free role was in 2011. I negotiated it. Zoom wasn't even a thing back then. Right. And right. yet, like, now 10 years later, we have this pandemic and everyone's trying to figure out, oh, how do I move from in-person learning to remote? When in reality, for 20 years, there's been all these varieties of solutions. Sometimes the biggest hardships create the largest momentum for change. With our, our model, the other thing we also talk about is the places and times people learn and how from an everyday example standpoint, that's really changed a lot today. You know, we're no longer just learning in one time and one place when we have a, a problem. You know, I might want that visual learning in many different ways, times, and places before I actually solve the issue at hand or have built my capability up. And you know, the things like this that I think about is, I always ask anyone, you know, when's the last time you tried learning something new or tried learning something right. at all? Like, tell me about all, what you use. Nobody tells me one thing. They'll always mention like, I would say definitely three resources, most often something like five. Crystal, what is your advice to those? Because you know there's going to be people who are going to be slow to adapt, who are still in that mindset of you know, people learning one way. How would you convince them or at least try to convince them to kind of, uh, kind of shift a little bit towards being more visual? Yeah, great, great question. I mean, the first thing I would, I would advice I would give is to say, you know, uncover your own fears. And the fears I often hear is that, oh, this is going to take up way too much time for me. I got to learn something new to be able to do this. This isn't my normal process. I'm firefighting. I already have so much going on. And then, you know, just like any other decision you have in life, like look at the potential consequence of staying with the status quo for you and the potential gain. And really think about that potential gain, not just for the organization and for your learners, because I think we all agree that modern learners want something different, that our businesses want something different. But there's a gain for you, too. And a lot of times that is being able to work on something new, being able to be creative, being able to learn 
to do things in a different way. Honestly, if you just sometimes step a little bit into that creative zone and learn something new and try something new, you remember, it's like a memory comes up for you of what it was like to be the experimenter, to be the innovator. Yeah. Again, like these things are not silos. It's not like, oh, Kathy over there, well, she's the creative one in our group, but that's not me. I just, I'm the nose to grindstone Nancy over here. Right. You know, right. it's, we all have this creator or innovator inside of us too. And just even trying the 5% new, maybe it is just adding the one graphic into um, your training and maybe you've never used Canva before, okay? And like, that's the one step, that baby step you take to learn about visuals. And the next thing you know, you're like this, you know, visual learning champion. It's easier for the everyday person to create visuals. And so yeah. why shouldn't we lean into that? And you're like, okay, maybe I can create multiple learning assets. Maybe I can be an LCD model champion, right? So I think like sometimes we're the biggest barrier uh, and and it's it's up to us to be honest about that and then to be really open to the rewards of of doing something different.